So you might be wondering how I came to Torah. Uh, it's an interesting story. And I'll start with the fact that Jesus kept Passover. I always went to church as a child, uh, Sunday school. My mom taught Sunday school for a point. Um, and so we went to church and it always seemed weird like that Jesus kept the Passover like what was the last supper it was freaking Passover you know um, and that's why like any of you Catholics out there the unleavened wafer that you're eating as the body of Christ yeah when that happens that's because you eat unleavened bread during Passover so you're not supposed to have leavened bread for the also known as communion because they wouldn't have eaten leavened bread at the Passover feast. So, the Passover. Um, Jesus obviously did all the other stuff, too. That's a deeper dive, but just as far as I'm concerned, I remember asking my mom as a kid, like, why we didn't do Passover. And, like, what the heck is Easter, you know? And so the Easter comes from the King James translation translating from the Septuagint that in I believe it's Acts 12 20 or 12 14 um, they translate the Easter from Passover they mix up they put the word Easter in there instead of the Passover and they claim that it's because of the rising so like they're like oh well the sun rises in the east and the sun rose and it's the same word that they used for other words that mean Eastern uh, in previous books of the Bible, which is interesting when you're doing it third hand, you know? It's like, well, if, you know, Johnny tells me that this is a cherry tree, and I just remember that it's a fruit, and I say this is a grape tree, you know, grapes don't grow on trees, they grow on vines. And somebody was like, oh, I totally believe you, that makes sense. That's Jesus not doing the Passover <laughs> uh, and the translation of Easter. They just totally took some words that weren't the right words and like gave them to us, fed them to us. So that's where Easter comes from. Um, Good Friday is not in the Bible. Ash Wednesday is not in the Bible. Palm Sunday is not in the Bible. They're not biblical things. They might have been, you know, based on events that occurred, but they're based on events that occurred. And that's not the point of the Bible. The point of the Bible is that we have instructions on how to be human. Uh, from the beginning, in the beginning, Elohim. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, Yeshua being the word. So... My mom said, because we don't. And I said, well, why don't we? And she said, because the Jews do. And so it's like, okay, you know, as an eight-year-old, you're like, I can draw the logical conclusion that, well, they're doing it, and so we don't have to. And so, you know, let that go. Um, the other thing being, well, we just, like, we're different than them, uh, which is not proper, because why would Yah create everything and everybody and devise them to be separate. Like, he is the Ahad, the one. The oneness is what brings you to Elohim. Not only being one with him, but being one with each other that we love our neighbor. The two greatest commands, love him and love our neighbor. So, um, I remember arguing with this chick, Jew chick, when she, the first pizzeria that I worked at, and she was a fucking psycho. Uh, sorry for that, but she was a fucking psycho. Um, and I had a conversation with her one day about how, like, I think that the Christians need to do Jew stuff. To which she said, well, the Jews don't do Jew stuff. And I thought, that's fair, because she didn't do Jew stuff. She worked on Saturdays, and she, you know, uh, kept, like, barely kept Passover. And so... She didn't really do the juice stuff, and I'm sure she wasn't doing no ass to coat because she didn't get outside. Hasty as fuck. 
But Sukkot's a very important uh, holiday. Gets you back in touch with nature, as we were intended to be. Refuge Medical. Um, so, we need to get back in touch with nature. Because even like back in the day when the cities were still built on dirt, there was, uh, you know, still made a bed. And so, the Sukkot is like the layover. They're like, remember where you had a layover in Detroit that one time and you your plane got delayed and you were there for a couple of days sleeping in the airport in Detroit. Um, that didn't happen to me. Actually, my lay layovers went quite smooth the few times that I flew. So, um, yeah, Sukkot's important. Um, and even Jews today at least the ones that I talk to. I'm sure, and there are, you know, like I'm not overgeneralizing the entire Jewish population because there's some people that like will out Torah me and will, uh, you know, like follow it to the letter, uh, which is good for them. You know, they're doing their best. It's not all about that. That's why Jesus came, but yeah, okay, sure. Do what you got to do. Um, the... I always knew. I always knew that the Jews had to keep the Torah because it was one book. The Christians had to keep the Torah because it was one book. What I didn't know was that we are one people. I didn't understand the whole Israel thing. Um, and it's interesting because Bear was just talking about this on uh, Patreon, too. Uh, but I didn't understand the whole Israel thing and how, like, you know, why would God have separated the Jews and the Christians it doesn't make sense like we are one like that's like to, the same to say like blacks and whites are different like no we're not I'm sorry <laughs> they're you know we're one people we all have uh, two arms two legs Bruce Lee said this too it just so happens we're different we are but one family so I, I grew up on Bruce Lee philosophically um, I've listened to a lot of fair independent the sweatshirt, the refuge, the fucking quotes, the, sometimes he's playing, I'm listening to him read the Bible in the background of my work. Here, let's move you over here a little bit. So, um, those were my hypotheses of Torah before I understood Torah. Now, make this argument too, any of you scientists, atheists out there, um, you guys have to take the scientific method. And there was actually a guy who did this on TikTok or some shit. Um, and I guess the Bible has over 200 scientific discoveries that hadn't been recorded at the time that the Bible was written. So, uh, I mean, there's how to make soap in there. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Um, the decomposition of humans, which I guess is pretty mundane like we all like come back in two years and try and dig your dead grandfather up he's he's gone he's gone um so then i well i guess we should go back to bruce lee then for going into how i found torah the bruce lee grew up with a lot of fighting watch the bruce lee videos all the time in movies he was such a badass um but my dad did a lot of street fighting and i mean you know so i could literally fight before i could flush a toilet um and so i could also fight before i could talk which is an interesting uh disposition to have and kind of ass backwards paradoxical juxtaposition but the point is that when you are going to fight before you're going to talk, you're not going to succeed in the world because the world's not about fighting, it's about peace. 
Um, so, we have to make peace, but seriously. Um, studied the philosophy of Bruce Lee, got into Western philosophy, Western medicine, Western psychology, um, did the whole Buddhism thing for a little bit, Confucius. I like the fact that like there are eight noble truths and the fourfold paths and yada, 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 but they're very kind of like, like how we have like the two, like there's the great, what are the greatest commands in all the Torah? Well, love God and love your neighbor. And then how do we do that? We've got, you know, have no gods before me, honor the Sabbath. Um, what's the other one? Make no carbon image, make no idols. Um, I'm blanking out on the Ten Commandments, which are kind of fucking important, but... Then we've got the love your neighbor, honor thy mother and father. And Jordan Peterson's discussion, I didn't love, I don't love all of it because they're looking at it from a very textbook standpoint, which is not how you read the Bible. Like you have to actually believe that God is real before you can read the Bible and understand the Bible and get anything out of the Bible. But, you know, praise Yah and uh, I pray that Yeshua will walk with them. That Yeshua is present in that room and the Holy Spirit is as well. And you can see the Spirit moving a certain degree um anyway they had the transition of the you know loving god to the loving of the neighbor with the honor thy mother and father because they're like humans but they're authoritative humans that you're born with right so like from jump you have to be subjected to them or your consciousness developed to conceptualize elohim so that's the transition one, commandment number five. And then you get your do not murder, do not adulter, do not covet, and this is how you love your neighbor. So you have your, your, you know, Elohim at your center, that's your one, the unity. And then the love God, love your neighbor, that's your two. And then broken down into 10, the 10 commandments. And then you go into the 613 laws of Moses, which the, laws come out to a lot more uh, direct, you know, a lot more relative to each person. Um, and so I prayed, and I prayed, and I was like, yeah, I know that there's something. I said, you know, God, whoever, dude, probably I still call God dude, which is not the best, but something that I do and that's my humanity um, so I was like dude I know there's something you want me to know and I don't know what it is and I need you to have a bearded man in the woods tell me and so I was scrolling through I found Bear Independent on YouTube and uh, it wasn't a Bible video at first but I found his Bible videos so if you prefer to audiobook the Bible. You get a lot of his commentary, but it's good to have him teaching you. He just became ordained to be a pastor, which is wonderful. Very happy for him because he's been doing it for a while. He just didn't want the title. And uh, so, yeah, I end up clicking on his Bible videos after a couple weeks of watching his other ones because the spirit was just moving me. I took the family Bible from my parents' house opened it up and the spirit just like like you know that feeling like when you put a cup like you have a dirty cup you put it under the sink faucet and it's just like and it just fills the cup up like real quick and you're like man I just wanted a little bit of water in the cup so that I could scrub and clean the cup and it's just like cup's full and then you got to dump it out and then you're like well fuck I might as well rinse it because there's milk in here and then you start scrubbing that's when you come to Torah when you come to the fullness of understanding with the Holy Spirit that's what it's like praise yeah um so yeah that's how I came to Torah and then you do the Torah and you just start seeing like all the all the like things that can happen all the all the manifestations all like 
like I blessed a kid that was fishing and like by the time I crossed the street he had a fish you know what I mean and it's like that's kind of cool you know that's a good feeling um, you know stuff like that so you got to keep the Torah and good things will happen and above all just keep keeping the Torah you know what I mean like try it out for 30 days try it out for two months and that's my point going back to the atheists and the scientific method like you create a hypothesis and then you do an experiment and then you'd observe the experiment and then you'd recreate a hypothesis with a different variable and so hypothesize i'm hypothesizing for you that the torah is the key to happiness in life and i think you should test that out for 30 days for 60 days you know, keep the Sabbath, don't eat pork, little things like that, don't have any orgies, um, don't eat blood, which we generally don't do, don't sacrifice to idols, don't bow down to idols, don't, you know, do anything stupid, you don't have to kick your crutches out, like, I still smoke, I'm trying to kick it, but that's a crutch to me, so it's not, it hasn't left me yet, because I need to be standing, um, and so, try the Torah. Things like that. You can look at uh, Acts 20, 15 through 19, if you want an easy synopsis. Um, Exodus 20 has the Ten Commandments. Um, what else we got? We've got the... There's a guy that pulled up that's sitting in the parking lot. Um, I'm out front now, and I can see the customers, but he's just chilling in the car, so that's why I seem a little distracted, so I'm like, yo, is this guy coming in? But whatever, he'll just join us. So, the Exodus 20, Acts 20, 15 through 19, uh, where else do we have? Leviticus from uh, Leviticus from like 18 on see I'm going to try and get a cohesive uh, like diagram of where the laws are because there's a lot of like how to build the temple between the Ten Commandments and the like Levitical law um, there's a lot of you know adornments and just kind of things that lay people don't need to know and i even tell people like if you get to genesis chapter 10 and you're like all these people being born and i don't care and i can't follow it and i can't pronounce any of these names just skip it just come back it's like watching a movie the second time and you're like oh that's that guy's son and that's where he fits in here i missed that you know um or this is her brother or you know liam neeson's in what country at this point and taken um but keep the Torah. That's how I came to Torah. Um, the Torah, just for you who don't know, is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's the basis of it. If you do nothing else, do that. And, you know, like I said, above all else, keep the Torah. Because it's like, no matter how much you fuck up, no matter how bad those crutches are, as long as you're not breaking, like, the Ten Commandments or the, you know, big ones, you be all right. Just keep doing you and keep keeping the Torah. And you'll build the relationship with Elohim. And throw some prayer in there. Um, read your Bible. Um, read it every day. Read it as much as you can. Listen to it. Absorb it. Immerse yourself in it. Um, that is the word of Elohim. And so... It's your, it's your black and white connection to him. Don't abuse it. Don't take it for granted. Use it. And I'm going to bless you. Bless you. That you come to the Father through Yeshua. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Bless you.